Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to talk about an interesting question that kind of pairs the present with the past. And that has to do with using an old tube type amplifier and with a modern uh, radio. Uh, the question comes to us from Teddy Dover, KI4TED, and uh, he says, I purchased an AL811. Okay, 811 is a tube type. An AL811 is an amplifier made with or made around that tube type, and uh, MFJ has uh, several of those. Uh, it's a tube type amp. The circuit design is is as old as the hills. Um, uh, they still work. They still work uh, just fine. The economics of antenna of uh, amplifiers right now is still such that the tube amplifiers watt for watt are cheaper than getting um, all transistor amplifier. Uh, the big power transistors required for the uh, high power output uh, for the transistor amps are still quite expensive and um, you can get new uh, amplifiers that look like from the front they must be all solid state but you open it up and they've got tubes in them okay so this is a tube amp and uh, because well what he doesn't tell me is what model he got whether he got it new whether he got it used I'm going to assume that it's used. They've been around for a while. And he has it connected to a TS-2000. Now that's a um, Kenwood radio. Uh, Kenwood radio TS-2000 is an old standby. They've had a version or so of that model for probably 20, 25 years. Okay, so you could be buying it brand new and it'd be very different radio from the one that you bought uh, 20 years ago, okay? And so you've got amplifier radio. How do you connect them? So let's talk about that because the folks at DX Engineering recommended using an ARB704, which I believe is either Ameritron or MFJ, but it's, it's an interface device that goes between the radios. Uh, that takes care of the ALC and the on and off and so on, uh, uh, push to talk and so on. Um, he says he's uh, wondering how to connect and tune the ALC for my Reagan amp and if it's really necessary. Yes, it is necessary. I can't find any real info for this process. Well, it's part of the black art of uh, antennas. Uh, of uh, amplifiers. Let's take a radio, in this case the TS2000. Um, you can still buy these new today. Um, and the 811 AS811. Now you have coax going to coax. Okay, This is your coax. This signal right here will be the output of the TS-2000 and it will go in here to the grid um, the grid of the 811 with necessary tuning circuitry in there. Obviously both of these get power and ground and so on. What else runs between these? There's a cable that comes in and usually these are little phono connectors, sometimes called RCA connectors. Phono connectors on the back. This one is push to talk. Now the way this works is when the radio wants to transmit, it will hold this down via a relay to ground, okay? So the amplifier, this is universal, senses 
that this is grounded, therefore it will go into transmit. Now, there's a couple things you have to understand about this. In the older amplifiers, the voltage that is being grounded was about 25 volts. So you ground that, it's going to pull a relay in that's supplied with about 25 volts. That is way more than the modern radios can handle for uh, the transmit there. So the modern radios, which includes the 2000, will go up a maximum of four or five volts. So if you hook this up, this is going to try to ground current with a 25 volt source pushing on it. This can cause problems here. So what you want in between is a relay and the relay latches here and this is designed so it will have well it's actually connected to a like a four volt and then this relay right here connected to ground okay but the point is that the TS2000 only sees four volts and via a relay it'll sync up to 25 volts Okay, now this signaling by providing a ground to a line seems counterintuitive. You think you should be sending a signal this way. Well, you are. It's just this is the convention for signaling on these things. Okay, now what's the other thing that we've got to worry about is the ALC. Now the ALC is a voltage generated by the amplifier and it goes to the back of this I'll just put it over here ALC now what the ALC does is as the that's a negative voltage as the ALC goes down from zero down it causes the TS2000 to transmit less power it goes directly to the power control on the radio you could reach on your radio and turn, well, in this case, it's the multi-knob for the, um, on the ICOM, turn the knob and make the power go down. Now, my amplifier here is an old, old, but it's all transistor. So it's all 12 volt and there is no ALC. So I have to set the thing up and I figured out that if I put out 62 watts max I will max out the transmitter. If you put out more than that it's bad for the transmitter. But most have ALCs. ALC the voltage goes for a modern transmitter between 4 volts negative and zero okay the more it, it, the closer it gets to four volts the less power this thing puts out it will go all the way to zero if you give it four volts which by the way if you want to use your old radio or whatever on qrp you can turn down the power by simply supplying that voltage on the alc line okay now what does the ALC do? If the 811 notices that it is getting overloaded, the too much power is coming in here, this is getting too hot and so on, it will raise, or lower in this case, the ALC voltage to cause the transmitter, or in this case we'll call it the exciter because that's what it is, this is transmitting will cause the exciter voltage to, to, or exciter wattage to go down. Now a lot of people don't know this, but this is true. This thing doesn't just need a voltage from here to say what the power output should be. It actually needs power. This thing will consume power. The power is dissipated right there in that first tube. Okay, and so this thing actually, the exciter has to provide power 
to this tube here. Now in the old radios that had your uh, output tubes, there would be a third tube which would drive those two tubes by actually providing not just a voltage but power. There's actual measurable power uh, going between them. Like I said, about 60 watts or so. It, it's different for each amplifier. Okay. Now the problem is that on the older radios, that ALC again was about minus 25 volts. So if this thing wanted to reduce the power, it puts a voltage in here, which by the time it hits 4 volts, completely shuts down the radio. Shuts down the exciter, and the amplifier will put out nothing. So this thing says, oh, I don't have a problem anymore, so it'll send this back toward zero and this thing will jump up and send power and you can get a whoa, 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 really fast reaction uh, between these as the ALC voltages fight each other. So you don't want to do that. And that's what that device that he was talking to you about takes care of. That's the ARB704. I looked it up. Um, it's a DX engineering part. A R B. It's a. I think the the A is probably amplifier. The B is a buffer. Uh, Seven O four. Okay. What it will do is make sure that the A L C coming this way meets the modern standards of the modern rigs, even though the old amplifier, if it is an old amplifier, may give out too much voltage. It's got the necessary uh, drive in here, a little bit of electronics, to keep that right. And the same with the ALC grounding. You only have to ground 4 volts instead of the 25 and the old amplifiers. Now, if your 811 is a new amp, You'll have to check the manual for this. It may be that it's been designed for the 4 volt over here. And then you won't need this in between, except as a buffer. Uh, if the amplifier is like some of the tube stuff in the back, tube stuff doesn't mind transients so much. Bloop, you know, it's over. But in a transistor radio, bloop, and you just blew all your transistors. So it's a protection device that goes there in between them. So I would really look at this because you can get these old amplifiers pretty cheap. Sometimes they have very soft tubes in them, which means they don't transmit very much power. So you want to get, before you buy an old one, you want to get a power meter in there and see how much it really puts out. And so on. the tubes can be replaced, but they are expensive. Um, so there you have it. This is how uh, we've got these things. What the ALC does is it protects the tube from too much input. And the PTT uh, tells this to transmit when this is transmitting. Okay. And there's usually just a titch of a delay, so the tube doesn't mind so much. Um, but there you have it. There you have what happened. So, Teddy, I hope that uh, answers your question, and uh, you're, you'll be clear with that. Okay, so um, I just want to say that um, if you uh, would like to help support this channel financially, you may do so by going to decastlercom slash support and picking a way that you find most helpful from a one-time tip to a subscription or uh, whatever you may like. You can do it through PayPal, you can do it through Patreon, <clears throat> uh, lots of different choices. A number of people who don't like to deal with credit cards and Patreon and stuff like that, uh, you can mail uh, something to me, the address that's on the website. Okay, so um, you can go there and pick a way that's most helpful. Also, that's the page where you can order the thumb drives that have uh, the Tech General and extra lessons on them. Please also subscribe 
and click the bell and click like. Don't forget to comment. Until we next meet, 73.